trying to get maybe one result that might help. The other results are for veterans' hospitals or for residences for veterans. And at that point, I might say, there's nothing good here for me. But that's not really the case. There are actually 47,000 nonprofits in the, across the country that are designed to specifically to help veterans. The problem is that these veterans who need job, job training and who need educational services to enter the workforce just aren't being connected to the, the, these nonprofits that serve veterans, many of which have programs specifically designed to educate or to train uh, veterans into their jobs. That connection between the two just isn't happening. Okay, so our solution to this problem is after the service.org. And basically what we want to do is we want to match uh, demand with supply. So as you saw from that density map earlier, uh, there's a number of nonprofits out there, a lot of whom serve veterans in the services that we're, we're looking at, which are education, you know, academic counseling, and job training for jobs in the 21st century. Um, and what we want to do is make it easier for veterans to use, to take our visualization tool and look near, near them and find these services. And that's not very easy to do right now. So I'll walk you through this. So this is just a wireframe of what our website would look like. So let's say I am a disabled veteran in um, my early 20s and I'm unemployed. I go to this website and I decide that I need some help finding funding for higher education. So I click on higher education and I'm directed to this interactive map of the US. So then I zoom into my hometown, which happens to be Huntsville, Alabama. And I see that there's one nonprofit that offers educational tools and funding. It's called Still Serving Veterans. And every year it gives, it secures over 77 million people with, or $77 million in new benefits and services for salaries for veteran clients. So this is something that could be very helpful for me. I scroll down and I get their phone number and their website, and all of the information is available to me. I can click on, their, on the Google Open, I can search for it, and then their website comes up. So all of the information is very easily accessible to me as a person who needs these services. Another thing that I can do with the map is find other organizations within my hometown that provide other services to veterans. So you can see how easy it is to get the name, the title, the phone number, and the website for all of these different organizations with this tool that wouldn't come up on. So this helps with one problem, which is matching demand with current supply. But when we were looking at this data and the power of these tools, we saw something that we're that that this tool doesn't do. That we could we could really solve a much bigger problem with it. And that's we aren't just going to match supply and demand. We're going to fundamentally change the supply because it's currently not where it needs to be. Uh, so if we imagine we could use this data to target specific locations on this map that just don't have nonprofits serving veterans or enough, enough of them. Once we've identified these locations, we do three things. One is identify those nonprofits that are currently serving veterans, but just aren't advertising or aren't listing themselves as such, so veterans aren't finding them. The second would be we would take those nonprofits that may be doing job training or maybe doing educational services, but just not for veterans, or they aren't advertising themselves as such. Encourage them to do that because there's an unmet need. And the third is, if one, if the first and second aren't happening, if there actually just aren't those nonprofits, that's important market information for the market to know. So if a, if a foundation is looking to support vets, they can eventually they can find the places that are just not being served. There just isn't capacity right now. And so Gabe will walk us through an example of this. Thank you. Um, so if we go back to our map. We zoom out. 
So this, this map shows uh, the population density of young veterans, I think specifically ages 18 to 32 in the United States. And on it, we're gonna overlay all the nonprofits over uh, $250,000 annually in revenue that serve veterans in job training. If we look at this, we can see that there's actually a gap. There's states like Arizona that have a high population of veterans but don't have nonprofits, at least ones listed, that are advertising themselves as such, um, that are doing job placement services. So this is a clear example of what Ross was mentioning, which is a place where there's definitely demand for these services, but the supply might not just be there. One way to deal with that might be to reach out to one of these organizations um, and find an organization that actually, doing some Palantir magic, <laughs> uh, find one of find one of the organizations uh, that actually does serve veterans because if you remember our map from the beginning there are a number of organizations in Arizona that serve veterans of course but not any that do job placement services so if we reach out to an organization like military veterans organizations in Tucson we can say look there's a need for, for job training services in Arizona you guys are here, you guys know the local veteran population, this is an important thing that you can do. So that's what we came up with today. But we saw two specific areas which we could really grow from here. So we only identified solutions to two big needs, uh, education services and job training. But there is a whole host of other services that veterans could use that we could also adapt this to, whether it's PTSD uh, support or it's animal therapy training. Um, the second big frontier we can see this expanding to is just improving our data. Uh, the data we use today is a little bit limited because we only used uh, organizations that had identified themselves as veteran organizations. Uh, also, we were doing keyword searching, which uh, should improve when new data becomes available so that we're not just searching for things that identify as educational services. We can do better, uh, can characterize organizations that are, or uh, come up with algorithms that understand which organizations are likely to be serving veterans in this way. Um, and finally, the data we're using right now only tells us where the headquarters of a foundation or of a nonprofit is. It doesn't actually tell us the whole geographic spread. And so that improving that data would also improve the service dramatically. Uh, in the end, we see this as something that could roll out almost tomorrow to better connect supply and demand. But we see this as much bigger than that. We see this as a, as a way of actually meeting the needs of veterans, not just the, the current supply of, of services, but meeting every need they have through identifying those needs and, and meeting them with supply. to that, um, in terms of improving data, one thing that we were discussing is that um, when the new budget gets passed, it looks like uh, a lot of the tax forms that nonprofits fill out will be digitized, and having that information will allow us to better identify which organizations provide which particular services.